Well, welcome back to Rachel Rasmussen from Books to Prisoners. Uh, Rachel's spoken to us before, so just a little brief reminder of, of her background. Uh, she was born in uh, Northfield, Minnesota. She grew up and she went to Concordia College in Minnesota. And uh, then she went on for graduate studies at Divin of Divinity. Can you still hear me? In heart and uh, Harvard. She uh, finished up her PhD here at the U of I when she came here in 1996. Uh, she uh, raised a family here and then taught at Danville Correctional Center from 2008 to 2012. And in uh, 2015, she became the volunteer coordinator for Books to Prisoners. I recently heard her uh, the organization was being honored by Education Justice Project, who we've also had as a speaker in the past. And, and they do, well, the two organizations uh, connect a lot and do a lot together. Uh, and I heard her speak about how things have changed for Books to Prisoners during the pandemic and how their needs have changed, how their needs for volunteers and for books have changed. So I asked her to come this morning to tell us how we can help out. Great. Thank you. Um, can everybody hear me? You can hear, okay. Um, <clears throat> so yes, thank you and um, good morning. Um, I did uh, speak here maybe two years ago uh, when we were actually um, having breakfast together. And what I can't <laughs> remember is how much, uh, of course you all remember everything I said, but what I have is a 10 minute um, sort of introduction to books to prisoners um, that I really hope is not going to just say everything you already know. But I think it's a nice way to show what we used to be like before uh, COVID. Uh, COVID. And then toward the end, um, I will jump back in and go over some of the, yeah, like um, the very said, some of the things that have that have changed. So if that's acceptable to everybody, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, screen share here and give this a whirl and I'll see you on the other side. Let's see, can everybody see that? Yeah, okay. So let's go here, let's go here. Let's go there. Is there audio? Uh oh. Yes, there should be audio. Um. Rats, this is live on Facebook. Okay. Did okay. um, you press the two little buttons when you when you <clears throat> when you say you want to share it? You have to do the two little buttons at the bottom. Okay. Let me let me go back and do that here. Sorry, everybody. While we're, while we're waiting, let's sing Scott happy birthday, unless he wants to make a contribution to the foundation. I, 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 I do. <laughs> I am. I will. <laughs> State of Illinois. We run lending libraries in both Champaign County jails. We're small. We run on a budget of maybe 24000 a year but we're huge in the difference we make in the lives both of incarcerated people who receive our books and the volunteers who read their letters and work in the jails. We're located at the IMC. You see the outside of the building here and our humble entrance is down the stairs in the back. Here's a picture of our main workroom before we moved into it. And then you can see how we've packed it with books and happy volunteers reading and answering letters. So what does it take to send books to prisons and our county jails? I'm gonna say about four basic things. Books, of course, 
a working relationship with the Department of Corrections and our local sheriff, funds, and volunteers. Books. Yes, you can donate using our donation bins around town. Uh, these two are outside the Common Ground Food Co-op at the Lincoln Square Mall. They're upstairs in the IMC. They're at Parkland and the University of Illinois. And we get a lot of books. We use all the books we get, unless they're in poor condition. We put them on our shelves to choose from in response to an average of 180 or so letters a month that we get from prisoners asking for books. And we use them to stock our lending libraries in the downtown and satellite jails. We use them to sell um, through our online bookstore. Uh, we can raise a lot of money that way for shipping. And we sell the rest at two fundraiser book sales a year, uh, in which we can put out about 7,500 to 10,000 books. You'd think with this wealth of donated books, we'd have what we need. Well, but we don't get enough of what prisoners ask for most. For example, how to draw books or dictionaries. <clears throat> Here's a list of topics and books that we wish people would donate to us more frequently because they are in such high demand. We try hard to send them what they want to read. We think literacy increases when you can read what it is you're interested in reading. And we also accept feedback when it's appropriate. So in addition to books, we need a working relationship with IDOC and the sheriff. And of course, all nonprofits need funds. Here are some of the organizations and businesses and volunteers that help us bring in the money that we need to function. Okay, I've done the what, where, and how. So who is Books to Prisoners? People who volunteer include retired people, high school and college students, ex-incarcerated people, community members, clubs, sororities, fraternities, Parents bring their children, grown-up children bring their parents. As of yesterday, we've sent almost 161,000 books to over 22,000 incarcerated individuals. Now we need to ask why. Why do we do what we do? Why don't prisoners have access to books? And why should prisoners have access to books? Many people in jail and prison want to change their lives for the better. And they know books change lives. As Javier writes, we are expected to change just by sitting in a box, but that is not how it works. Reading books, fiction as well as nonfiction, has granted me the tools I require to truly open my mind and see all that I was previously blinded to. Knowledge is what truly changed me and I believe the work your group is doing will have a profoundly positive effect on others like me who crave change, knowledge, truth. Why is there a gap between prisoners' desire to read and the availability of books in Illinois prisons? Money has a lot to do with it. There hasn't been as much spending on books lately but also a lack of understanding of the key role education plays. Books change their mindsets and their odds of being successful upon release. Of all the things we pay for to house people in prison, books in prison libraries is actually fairly inexpensive. Interestingly, the steep drop-off in funding for books could be costing the state more money in the long run. Research indicates education programs reduce recidivism rates and libraries play a role in that work. How do books change lives? Well, let's listen to the people who write to us. 
This man says, I've been receiving books from your service for a little over five years now. It started out by you sending me a dictionary, and over the years I've been sent a little bit of everything. You people are a godsend to prisoners. So often we're forgotten or even looked over. Your service of books allows us to build our mind, which in turn raises our awareness, which in turn builds up our character, which aids in our rehabilitation, which prepares us to re-enter society and have a positive impact on the communities a lot of us help to destroy. Thank you. And he continues, today I write in hopes that you can send me, etc. Here's another example of the difference access to books in prison can make. When I first requested books from you, I was borderline illiterate and a high school dropout. Thanks in significant part to the Books to Prisoners organization, I've since achieved not only a high degree of literacy, but I've also earned both a GED and an associate in liberal studies. And I'm now preparing to, upon my release, achieve a Bachelor of Social Work and a Master's of Social Work with an emphasis on substance addiction. You should pat yourselves on the backs, for you have been very instrumental in the transformation of my thinking, where today I stand prepared to return to society a contributor unto the solutions, rather than an antagonist towards order and civility. And this one probably means the most to me. He writes, the moment I knew I would never commit another crime occurred during a book discussion group I was leading in my cell block. It wasn't 19 years of sitting in a little cell that brought me to this point. It was exposure to books and a chance to discuss and learn from them with my peers. On behalf of incarcerated readers throughout the state of Illinois and the other volunteers at Books to Prisoners, I hope this slideshow has inspired you. I've listed some ways you can help or get involved with us. And for more information, you can always go to our website, www.bookstoprisoners.org. Now, can everybody hear me? You have to yes. say, because, yes. Okay, good, because I'm going to take over now. Because much of what you saw was so obviously <clears throat> before COVID. So the update is that we shut down completely in March, uh, as everybody else kind of terrified of uh, the virus. Um, we have a core staff of people who are between 70 and 80 years old. And so we were very nervous that they stay home until we could figure out how to reopen. We reopened in May. Uh, meanwhile, we lost revenue from having to cancel three benefit book sales. So that would be about 12, 13,000. Um, and in May, we opened again. We operate at a very reduced capacity. We have maybe uh, three volunteers can come in at a time, um, but we are sending books out uh, best we can. And we've explored other kinds of fundraising. I need to say that the community support has been just overwhelming. Um, this, these are two undergrads who on their own decided to do a community dictionary drive. And here they are delivering uh, 160 dictionaries at least. So one of the other ways that we're fundraising that you might want to um, note <clears throat> is we're having an online auction and raffle. Um, and there is uh, opportunities still, uh, if you have <laughs> stuff you want to donate, something to get out of the house, uh, if you're house cleaning or whatever, but um, this, this will benefit us as well. Um, other things we've done, um, we've had targeted book drives, um, by which I mean we ask for a very specific theme of book only. And so we recently had a Martin Luther King Day Freedom Book Drive that brought in about 100 and some books on African-American uh, freedom movements, biographies, fiction, et cetera. And you were a part of that. Um, this is, we got a wonderful um, uh, box of books from Rotarians and we thank you very much. The do-it-your-home repair is gone already. Starting a business went out immediately, and there's just a few GED books left on the shelf. So um, on our oops. website, you'll find information. So that's what I have 
to say. I do have, um, and, can, and can email uh, immediately after this, uh, a wish list um, of books and authors we're still looking for um, you know, that we could use a lot more of. Um, but um, that's, that's my basic presentation. I did need to correct one slide, lest you think we sent out almost 161,000 books uh, as a Wednesday, I need to qualify that and say, since we started in 2004, <laughs> we've sent that many out. <laughs> we're good, but we're not that good. So um, at this point, if you have any questions, um, that'd be great. Rebecca, thank you very much for being with us. And I think Mary Hudson brought you to our your organization to our attention several years ago. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, and I think it's been maybe a couple of years ago, uh, I made a donation at the Urbana, the post office next to Lincoln Square. I think it was a drop off there. Do our books donated there or actually into the media center? Uh, if you go to the bin inside the IMC, there is a, a large uh, receptacle and it says books to prisoners on it and those go to us. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for your donation. I hope you can see that we get so many books from this community. I, I tried to estimate one time about 20,000 donated in a year uh, so that we can uh, certainly, you know, we, we put as many as we can into the prison. The prison doesn't accept all the books and often, um, I mean, there's types of books that they, you know, wouldn't let in. Um, what about... What about censorship by the uh, yeah. Department of Corrections? Yes, that's kind of what I was <clears throat> um, getting to. And that's kind of a, a, an ongoing battle, you might say. Um, they have certain rules for security that we always uh, try to abide by. For instance, um, books with nudity, and that prohibits some um, how to draw books. It prohibits uh, some exercise books if the spandex on the athlete is too tight. Um, so it isn't just that they're asking for porn, okay? <laughs> we have, you know, and, and if there's uh, romance or fiction where the editor thought they'd sell the book by putting some really sexy people on the cover, um, it may be a really great read, but we can't send that in. Um, we can't send in books that have swastikas on the cover, things that promote hate. Um, so we work to abide by those restrictions. Now, censorship, um, uh, I don't know if you all recall, but um, the EJP library that I <clears throat> incidentally helped to build uh, at Danville Correctional Center um, was censored in a, in a big way that made the news. It went all the way, I think, to like the New York Times op-ed about, because what they did was pull all the books by African Americans and about African American history. So it's just can't get more blatant than that. Um, and so there was a big fuss and they um, changed their policy and let that all come back in. Um, so the books to prisoners across the country um, have learned to band together because uh, a DOC in say Washington state, New York state, decided, hey, let, we're not going to let used books in anymore. We're going to have everybody have a Kindle and a computer. And, you know, that's that's just really not feasible. Um, uh, but when we get to the press and we say, look, this is happening, the DOC is suddenly saying no used books, They we get enough attention that 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 pulls back and we're allowed to function again. So this has happened in different states. Um, and thankfully, um, Illinois has not faced that yet, um, but we know what we need to do. Turns out everyone, um, conservative and liberal, b uh, approve of books in prison. <laughs> so usually we just need to get the word out to the, to the press and that's taken care of. Um, but it is worth noting, uh, DOCs, try this um, in other ways. Sometimes I think they try to make contract with some sort of electric book, electronic book source um, and uh, wipe us out. But that's a long answer to your question. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Paul. Paul prints all our I have a stuff. 
I'm going to uh, put this in our notes for today's meeting, but um, I'm at your website right now. And uh, the, to, for donations, you're looking for books, you're looking for, uh, of course, money and also computers. Uh, get, uh, for donations, you prefer donations to be brought right to the uh, IMC? That is ideal, but for large um, donations, we'll have retired faculty. They're cleaning out their whole library. I will arrange volunteers to come pick stuff up, um, and that's that's easy to do. Um, so, yeah. What kind of computers are you looking for? Do you know that's? Um, <laughs> I think anything that's um, fairly recent. We have computers and programs so old that. We try to do things and it says this is no longer supported anywhere <laughs> so um okay. i can get back to you on that from our tech support man he's a phd in physics at the u of i uh, um at the website it shows a, a laptop i'm wondering if uh, other types of computers would also be useful to you guys desktop would would be fine okay yeah but i'll definitely put you in touch with the uh with our with Audi, our, our tech support cool. um, person. I also have a list, of, did I already say that, of other high demand titles and authors that I can um, email around to whoever's interested. Um, it'd be great. Right. If, yeah, it'd be great if you could just send that out to the to the group. I think they'd be interested in hearing it. I had a quick question. Be, sure. Um, what, okay, so you send the book, the, the, the prisoner asks for certain types of books. You send the books. What happens to them after that? Do the do the prisoners actually get to keep their own library going, or what happens to the books? Well, that's a great question. Um, they can keep the books. Uh, we don't want them back. Um, the um, when I worked at Danville Correctional Center, I learned that that's a medium high security facility. I learned there that the that the men are allowed. Um, I don't know, maybe a. a printer paper box size a little bit bigger of personal um for their personal belongings that's it anything that fills up that box more they can't keep it so they do need to get to move their books on because they can't store them all in that space so we've heard that they put them out into the day room um they it, just sort of a general sharing in the cell block uh, they donate to the prison libraries when they can but prison libraries are not reliably open. Um, and we get a lot of letters saying either, I've read all the books in the library because they're very poorly stocked, or I've been here for seven years, the library hasn't been opened once. Um, so the, the, the solution to all of this would of course be to, to hire and, and librarians and to stock the libraries with, with um, current appropriate you know, books um, rather than this sending everything in, but that's how it works. So we get letters saying, I love the book and so did everyone else. <laughs> so it gets shared. Great, thank you. Rachel, last time I heard you speak, uh, you talked about the fact that because of the pandemic and your inability to have the book sales right now, you really did not want certain yes. kinds of donated and and i was hoping Thank today you. you emphasize that a little bit more what you really want donated right now and maybe yes. you can talk about when you think you might be able to have a book sale again yeah thank you very much so what we do with our um uh book sale i mean what we do with all our, those extra books is we sell them and covid has shut down three book sales so that means we have we're absolutely bulging uh, with books stored for a sale someday. And we just can't take what we usually take and love to take, which is just whatever uh, people uh, bring. So we only now ask for very specific things and I'm gonna see if I can find my list, which of course um, I will bring up here. Uh, can everybody see that? Your screen sharing is paused. Big gray box. Shoot. Well, uh, talk about it off the top of your head. Yeah, sorry. Um, so right now, uh, the popular books are GED Prep, which you uh, gave us. There's a deal uh, on Kaplan 
2021 GED prep books at a place called Bulk Bookstore. I can give you that information. That's in high demand. Um, we need um, books on, uh, well, you saw how to drive, we can, how to draw, excuse me, we can always use uh, books on addiction, uh, recovery, and how to start a business and the trades, how to, you know, be a carpenter and a uh, plumber and those kinds of things. Um, in fiction, we need mystery, thriller, and um, sci-fi. And that's a list I will send you particular authors. That's a huge demand, doesn't stay on the shelf for long. Um, so that's kind of, um, those kind of books will move right out when we get them. Um, so um, yeah, thank you. You still uh, need paperback dictionaries? We always need paperback dictionaries. Uh, that's the only book that we buy. Um, and we found a way to, to get that, uh, oh, I think for about $4, a paperback Webster's dictionary. Um, a variety of dictionaries is ideal. Some, uh, some people write us and they're quite advanced. They don't want some beginner dictionary. You know, they want, they want all the words. <laughs> and if, then some, the student dictionary is just fine. Yes. If you had to pick one thing, would you prefer money donated and or books donated? What would be your number one? Since you haven't had three book sales, obviously your budget is probably yeah. shot. But what, what would they be the biggest need? That's a very uh, kind question. Um, I w yeah, I would say the, the money would, I mean, we can, we can uh, get what we need uh, if we're really low. Um, in books, we, we usually never buy books except for the dictionary and we spend all the money uh, on other um, operation, parts of the operation. But um, so if you gave money, some of it would get spent on books because we're kind of desperate. So I kind of want to say either one, but maybe cash is best. Well, you have to pay shipping costs, right? I mean, that's, yes, we do. That, that's probably a big chunk of your, I mean, these things aren't light. No, so, they are not. Right. We limit, um, we limit them to three pounds of books per letter. So they'll write and ask for maybe, you know, I want to read, you know, maybe six topics. And we choose for them and we have a scale and we try to keep each book order, we call it, to around three pounds in order to be fair to all the people that write and keep within our budget of shipping, which is about 700 a month. Was there any... Yeah connection with Orphan's Treasure? Hmm. You know, not formally, uh, but I have volunteers who sometimes go there to get books mm -hmm. <laughs> and they give them to us so that we can send them when we're desperate for one particular thing and we're looking looking for that. Uh, one, of, one of the things I would like to do is network more. I mean, this this connection with the Rotarians has been absolutely brilliant and such a, a windfall for us. It's just been so wonderful <laughs> to be able to, to continue to um, share with you and your value of literacy, um, how we're uh, part of that too. I So no, in, in the answer, we don't have any kind of network relationship other than the fact that our volunteers go and raid their shelves now and then, but that might be something. Sure. To build. I don't even know. Are they a nonprofit? Are they, are they a charitable organization? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But other people have mentioned that. You know, what about the Orphan's Treasure Box? And I personally have not even been there. What do you know about it? Uh, they just have a lot of books there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> do we have any last questions for Rachel? Well, if not, I want to thank you for coming today. That was awesome. Be thank sure you, and send that email that out to the, the, the whole group uh, that talks about what you need and where you'd okay. like money sent. If you'd like money sent, that would be awesome. All right. uh, I'm going to go ahead and close up our... Thank you, uh, Can I ask real quick um, yeah. if you put a link to the silent auction when you send the email about... Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we're, uh, it's on our Facebook page, too, if you... But yeah, I'll send all the links. That'd be awesome. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. Love you guys. <laughs> yeah.
All right. Um, so our bucket bucks for January was our food is medicine. We're closing that out. Uh, fe February 4th, uh, Tom Hodson is coming to talk about shelter box. Um, so we get to see uh, both the Hodsons hopefully that day. And uh, Daryl, if I could have you read the four-way test. That's better. Um, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And for us especially, is it fun? And with is that, Rotarian, have an awesome day. Thank you guys so much. Happy birthday, Scott.